Hey guys, today we're going to talk about injunctions. What is an injunction? An injunction is a court order to compel someone to do something or to restrain someone to prevent him from doing something. I've got a lot of clients very garang, a bit a bit come and look for me say I want an injunction, I want an injunction. My competitor is uh, spreading false rumors to my supplier or my customer. I want an injunction to stop him. There was also another client who was the who is an owner of a childcare center. One of his uh, teachers at the childcare center posted an Instagram story about her child at the playground. Okay, who has hand, foot, and mouth disease. And then it was uh, it went viral. It was uh, going all over the internet. So he wanted an injunction to stop the information from spreading on the internet. I mean, how can you do that? I'm going to tell you, give you a few reasons why it is not a good idea to get an injunction. Okay, number one, most probably you cannot afford it. An injunction will cost about twenty thousand dollars. Number two. An injunction is not a standalone application. You have to commence a lawsuit first. You need to issue a writ of summons. An injunction, an interlocutory injunction, is an interim measure. It is uh, to 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 uh, pre- uh, prevent harm to the plaintiff before he gets a chance to uh, prove his case at trial to get a permanent. Injunction. Number three, it is uh, quite difficult to get a uh, interlocutory or rather or interim injunction because you have to show that damages are not an adequate remedy. Okay, that uh, to compensate you for your loss if uh, the person is uh, not restrained. Even if you succeed in getting an injunction. And the person continues doing the act that he is restrained from doing. What's the worst that can happen? He will most probably get away with a fine, or at most, the worst case scenario, a few days in jail for contempt of court. So injunction may not be a particularly uh, effective um, mechanism, if you if you like to call that. So what is the purpose of an interlocutory injunction? That means pre-trial injunction, interim injunction. It is to protect the plaintiff against injury of his uh, rights, okay, for which he cannot be adequately compensated by damages if he wins at trial. So what this means essentially is that if he gets a permanent injunction after he wins at trial. Damages are insufficient. It's not enough to compensate him for the loss suffered. The test in Singapore on whether a court should grant an injunction uh, is based on the House of Lords case of American Cyanamide and Ethicon Limited. Okay, the first thing that the court will consider is whether there is a serious question to be tried. This is a very low threshold. Uh, the plaintiff, who is the applicant who is seek, seeking the injunction, has to show that he has a serious, arguable case. Uh, he has to show that uh, there's a real prospect of the applicant succeeding in his claim for a permanent injunction at trial. Uh, it cannot be frivolous or vexatious. Uh, what this means is that uh, his claim cannot be nonsense, rubbish. Okay. If uh, his claim is a nonsense claim, he will fail the first limb, and he will not be able to apply for an in, uh, interlocutory injunction. Also, if he does not have a reasonable cause of action to sue, uh, uh, you can watch one of my earlier videos. The link is uh, below on causes of action. Basically, you need a legal basis to sue someone. You cannot just sue someone for the sake of suing someone. You need a legal basis. The second limb of the American cyanamide test is that no interim injunction should be granted if the applicant, the plaintiff, can be adequately be compensated by damages for loss. 
he would have been sustained okay, if he wins at trial and he gets a permanent uh, injunction. Also, the court will consider whether the defendant has the money to pay damages. The third limb of the American cyanamide test is that the interlocutory or interim injunction will be granted if damages would not be an adequate remedy for loss he suffers if the defendant is not restrained by the uh, injunction. An interim injunction will be granted if uh, the applicant can show that damages is, will not be a, a sufficient and adequate remedy for the loss he suffers if he, uh, if he wins at trial and the, the, the de defendant is not restrained okay, by the injunction from doing something. And if the defendant uh, is able to succeed in trial uh, in being able to do what uh, the plaintiff is trying to restrain him from doing, the defendant can be adequately compensated uh, for the loss that he will be suffered by being restrained by damages. Let me give you an example. If uh, the plaintiff, the applicant, seeks an injunction to prevent uh, the defendant, a manufacturer of uh, tables, for example, seeks an injunction for the defendant to stop producing tables of a particular design. So the court will see whether if an injunction is uh, granted and uh, the table manufacturer is prevented, is restrained from manufacturing that design of table, whether he will be adequately compensated by damages. The court will also grant an injunction if uh, the applicant, the plaintiff, can sh is in a financial uh, position to pay damages to the table manufacturer in the event that uh, the table manufacturer, the defendant, wins. Okay, That means the plaintiff, the applicant, it, uh, does not get a permanent injunction. So. I've mentioned several times that the test is whether the losses suffered are such that uh, damages are not uh, a sufficient remedy. So when will damages not be a sufficient remedy? Well, examples would be disclosure of confidential information because if you seek an injunction to restrain, uh, for example, an employee from uh, leaking out a secret recipe or trade secrets. Once the trade secrets or secret recipe leaks out, no amount of damages can compensate you for it because it's confidential information. It, it, it just, the damages is not enough. Another example would be loss of goodwill. Once uh, your goodwill or your reputation is damaged, that's it. How, how is... Uh, uh, damage is going to be sufficient to compensate you for the loss of uh, your goodwill or reputation. Another example would be loss of credibility, credit worthiness. Credit worthiness means uh, your uh, your credit net, your credit worthiness with the bank. Okay, your standing in business circles. These are matters that uh, damages would not be sufficient to compensate you for. What is the procedure for an injunction? Taking out an interlocutory or interim injunction. You have to take out a summons, okay, accompanied with uh, a supporting affidavit to give the reasons uh, why uh, injunction should be granted, including uh, why, uh, the, uh, why damages would not be sufficient to compensate the applicant uh, in the event that he gets a permanent injunction. Uh, the court will also require the applicant uh, to uh, give an undertaking to the court, not to the defendant, but to the court, to pay damages if he is not successful in getting the permanent injunction at trial. So thanks for watching this video on injunctions.